Canon just released a new lens, the RF 135 1.8, and all of you are asking me the exact same question. How does it measure up to the RF 85 millimeter 1.2? Here are my thoughts. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now you might notice I don't have either of those lenses in front of me, but I do have a ton of experience with them. The problem is I'm shooting this video with the 85-1.2 and the 135 uh, Canon did pry from my cold dead fingers uh, and it doesn't ship till January, so I have to get it back at some point, but I don't have it now, but I have used them. Promise, this is not me reading a manual to you. Let's be honest, my thoughts are you buy either one of these lenses and the last thing you're gonna say is, oh my gosh, I wish I didn't have this lens. Not gonna happen. They're both gorgeous lenses. They have a lot of things in common, but let's compare the two of them so you can get a grasp on which one might be better suited for you. First of all, the price is very different. The 85 millimeter 1.2 is actually much more expensive. $700 originally, it's a $27.99 lens, although I just did see it on the Canon website for $25.99, but still that's $500 more than the Canon RF 135 1.2 that just came out at $20.99. So there's a big price difference, although honestly, if you're spending $2,100 or more on a lens, maybe that's not a huge price difference, but it's definitely something to It's easy for me because I've been using Squarespace for over a decade and you can see it at vanessajoy.com. I decided to use Squarespace so long ago because it was and still is one of the easiest ways to make a website out there hands down. Squarespace is a platform where you can create beautiful custom websites in just a few minutes. Choose from a plethora of templates where you can easily plug and play your own work. It's an all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. We all know that an online presence is crucial for your brand, so build one that stands out. Head over to this link for my exclusive 10% discount on your first domain at Squarespace. Now back to the video. Now I have used both of these lenses extensively. I've used them for portraits and weddings. So I definitely have hands-on experience and I'm gonna give you all of the minutia and the stats, but I don't want to take away from the practical use of either one of these lenses because that's ultimately what's more important. When you have those two lenses, which one do I grab more for what kind of job that I'm shooting? Because it's great to have really nice lenses and maybe on paper one is better than the other more suited than the other, but that's garbage if when you go to use it on an actual job, you're not grabbing for that lens and using it. Just my thoughts. So some of the minutia, if you go back and forth between these two lenses, one of them is the weight. The 135 weighs less. Not only does it weigh less, but it's also a little bit more compact because the width of the 85 is pretty thick. The 85 weighs about 2.6 pounds while the 135 weighs 2.1. That's something to literally weigh, not just when you're putting it in your bag and lugging it around, but when you're shooting with it potentially all day. A little bit, a half a pound might go a long way for you. One of the other obvious differences is one is 1.2. The 85 millimeter is a 1.2 aperture and the 135 is a 1.8. Are you going to see a huge difference between 1.2 and 1.8? No, probably not. Even a very trained eye might not be able to look at a photo taken at 1.2 versus 1.8 and tell which is which one right there. However, if you're shooting in low light, like weddings, events, concerts maybe, that little extra bit, you know, one, one eight to one two, might just save your butt and you might be able to have a lower ISO and not so much noise in your image. Or you might be able to have a faster shutter speed, not introducing motion blur into your image. Now that is where we get into the next thing. Blur. The new 135 has image stabilization. The 85 millimeter does not. Now think about that for a minute. Image stabilization is wonderful, but the 85 millimeter lets in a little bit more light at 1.2, so do you need it? Well, maybe because that 85 millimeter is a little bit heavier, meaning you'll get more camera shake, and that image stabilization, especially when combined with an image stabilized camera like the R5, R6 II, so many other cameras, that's gonna give you, I think, up to eight stops of stabilization. That might be huge for you. Of course, it won't help you on the motion blur aspect, but it will help you on the stabilization of yourself, making sure you don't introduce blur with camera shake. I 
hope you're liking this video, but it's just the tip of the iceberg of what I have for you. Down in the description below, I have a ton of education links for you, but I also have a free download. Grab my posing inspiration guide that's gonna help you pose individuals, couples, and groups. Carry it along with you on your phone for your next shoot, or just scroll through for some quick inspiration. Anyway, back to the video. For me personally, image stabilization, if I can have it, I wanna buy it. When I'm shooting, I don't slow down that much. In fact, I shoot really fast, probably to my own demise. I probably miss things or I probably create motion blur just because I move around so quickly. So if I have the ability to have image stabilization, that's a huge plus for me, especially since I very frequently shoot in low light circumstances. And I very frequently in those low light circumstances like to go to a 1.6 crop with my R5 so that I can zoom in just a little bit more. In fact, that's one of my favorite things to do with the 135 lens. And now I can do it really, really easily because it has customizable buttons on the side. I've set my 135 customizable buttons to go right to the aspect ratio so I can quickly go to a 1.6 crop, essentially digitally zooming in that lens to become a 2.16 instead of of a 135. One more thing to note about aperture, which depending on how you shoot, may or may not be a concern to you at all. But the 85 millimeter 1.2 lens only goes to f16, while the 135 millimeter goes all the way up to f22. Now, to be honest, I actually was surprised when I was playing with the 135. I was shooting a ballerina against a silhouette of an epic sky, and I wanted a really high aperture so I could just pull as much detail as humanly possible from that image. I scrolled up my, my dial and I was like, oh, F22, this goes all the way to F22. That's pretty impressive when traditionally prime lenses like the 50 and the 85, they're only going to F16. Now I'm not wildly technical, don't shoot the messenger. Maybe you could educate me here in the comments. I believe that's because the aperture is really, really wide. So having the aperture close all the way down to F22 is a little bit more difficult. The 135 millimeter is a more narrow barrel. So that nine blade aperture, which by the way, both of those lenses have, can more easily go down to F22. Crunch down, become a little hole. <laughs> that's just my Common sense explanation could be entirely wrong, and I know you will tell me in the comments if I'm wrong. Speaking of those customizable buttons, that's something that the 85 millimeter does not have. While they both do have the customizable dials on there, maybe having the button right there at your fingertips on your lens is something you really, really want. The minimum focusing distance between the two of them maybe wouldn't really come into play for you because at 85, you're not really shooting super close up unless you're trying to get an eyeball in there, and you might be, but hey, you can always use that one six crop and that'll help you out, right? The minimum focusing distance for the 85 is 2.79 feet, while the 135 is 2.3. I don't think that's gonna be a deal breaker for anyone deciding between these two lenses. Now let's get to some of the similarities between the two lenses. Even though the 85 is ultimately a much fatter lens than the 135, they both have the same thread, an 82 millimeter thread. So you can use same filter sizes on both of the lenses. They're also both Canon's L glass series, which just means it's the most beautiful, gorgeous photography glass that Canon makes and it has that really pretty red circle around the lens. They both have the same nano USM autofocus motor in it, so they are screamingly fast. For the 85, that's a dream. Friends, if you remember the older EF8512, it was beautiful, but you couldn't use it in anything but broad daylight for the most part. The EF8514 came out, it was like, oh my God, this thing focuses fast and it's amazing. Well, now with the RF version of the 85, as well as the 135, they're both really, really fast. So which one of these should you choose if you're deciding between the both of them? Like I mentioned, you're not gonna cry when either one of them comes in the mail. When you get it in your hands, you're gonna squeal with delight. You're gonna love every picture you take with it. Well, maybe not every picture, but you will love either one of these lenses. I think it comes down to what lenses do you already have in your arsenal and how will either the 85 or 135 complement them? And of course, what type of photography are you doing? Because that will also matter in how often you will grab either one of these lenses from your bag. For me personally, I constantly shoot events, family photos, and portraits. Those are my three gigs. And my main lens right now that I use about 80% of the time is the RF 28 to 70 F2 lens. It's a beast, that thing. So if I had that lens, 
and I'm choosing between an 85 and the 135, I'm going for 135 all day long because that's a bigger difference from the 70 millimeter F2 that I can get to with the lens that I use very frequently versus going just up 15 millimeters, you're going all the way to 135. So that's what I would do. In fact, my biggest combo whenever I'm going out to shoot things, my minimal lenses that I have to have are the 20 to 70, 135. But let's just say that you're someone that has a 35 millimeter and a 70 to 200 lens. Personally, if I were you, I would go with the 85 millimeter because the 35 millimeter that's gonna probably be a lens that you run and gun with and you get a lot of wide stuff, but it's not really more of a portrait lens. And maybe your 70 to 200 you like as a portrait lens, but it's not getting you that dreamy background. It's not quite as crisp as a prime lens. So if you had those two lenses or something in that, scenario, I would probably go for the 85. Now, of course, the best advice I can give you if you can buy both, buy both. But let me tell you, I have both. I use the 135 way more. In fact, the 85 kind of stays on this camera. <laughs> I bring the 85 when I have extra room in my bag when I'm not traveling. Don't get me wrong, that 85 millimeter lens, it is gorgeous. It is such a stunning portrait lens. It is smooth as butter, as Jersey Gina would say. But practically speaking, while I would almost say the 85 millimeter is a higher quality lens, practically, I grab the 135 way more. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Which one of these lenses would you go with? But don't just say which one you want. Tell me why, because people are gonna learn from you. Tell me why you would go with one of the two lenses and what lens arsenal you have, as well as what you actually photograph. Guys, people read these comments. They don't just take my advice for it. They wanna see what all of you have to say. So in the comments, tell me which one you would go for, why, and what are you complementing your already existing lens arsenal with either one of those lenses. Hit like, subscribe, ring the bell. I'll see you next time.